Hello, everyone. Hello. Um. Okay. So, um, today is oh wait, Jacob's backstage pass, and we're gonna be watching Cats. I tried this last night and um, or yesterday, and it got uh, booted off. So, I've I've rearranged a few things, and um, we're gonna try again. So because I promised everyone I would do it, so I want to do it so that you have time to watch it before they take down the live stream. And, um, yeah, so there we go. So, my name is Jacob Brent, um, if you don't know who I am, and I played Mr. Mistopheles in the Broadway company, in the West End company, and the 1998 version, um, of Cats, film version, which is what we're going to be watching today. Or, uh, yeah. And, um, it's so funny, because I always say 1997, because that's when we actually shot it, but, um... They uh, they released it in 1998. As they do in most movies, you shoot them way before they're released. Um, so I thought it would be fun just to kind of go through, watch the movie with you, and um, s give sort of an impressions of, um, give some backstage, you know, um, tidbits, and really kind of um, explain the movie. A lot of people don't understand Cats, and it's... I, totally understand why but there is such a beautiful story here and um maybe maybe we can finally like once and for all clear it up and let you know what it is um it is morning here so i am having a little little tea a little tea with jay um that's jacob uh i don't know why i called myself jay i never speak i never call myself jay okay um, maybe I'm nervous because I'm live on YouTube. Hey, YouTubers, what's up? Here we go. We're going to try it again and see what happens. All right. Um, yeah, so I was in the Broadway production for, I joined in 91 and I think in 96, 96, we broke the record of longest running Broadway show. Is that right? Um, maybe in the fall of 96. Uh, and, um, I was Mistopheles in that production and I, um, and at the party they asked me to do the, they were, they told me they were going to do a film of this and I thought, um, ye, that was never going to happen because, or it, if it was going to happen, they certainly weren't going to ask me because no one in Broadway usually got the film roles. So, um, and about six months later they called me and asked me to, to, to go get on a plane to come over and be in the film. Um, so it's truly just extraordinary. And um, I just want to make sure that everyone knows, like, I understand how blessed I am and how um, magical and special and what, what a wonderful opportunity that was. And it has afforded me and really just changed my life. So everyone involved in that, thank you so much for trusting me um with this role to do it um it was a really wild crazy experience from the get-go because even getting over there was a crazy experience it was like touch and go all the time it was like um go to the go to the airport no stay don't go to the airport go to the airport because they they had to work out my work visa to get over there um, and it was like last minute and people were running around it was it was and I thought even then I thought oh this is not gonna happen all of this and this is not going to happen, but it did happen and it was a wonderful, amazing experience that I hope that I can share with you. So here we are. We're going to start. Um, what you're going to need to do is pull it up on YouTube. It's running live right now um, uh, through Andrew Andrew's what uh, YouTube, I believe, um, or the show must go on or something like that. Just type in cats and it's running. Um, it might and shortly overseas and i think it's here till sunday in the states um so that's what we're gonna do i have a stopwatch i'm gonna try to connect that i've put the times in the um in the chat or in the the description so if you get lost um you can kind of look for that and i will tell you that uh the title names as we go okay um hi diamond sword 400 hi um thank you for for saying hi uh yeah it was really fun i i was really bummed about last night but here we are we're 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 moving on it's a new day so um let's watch cats everyone i can't wait 
hopefully I'll remember stuff and um, be able to tell you. So let's see. I'm going to go here. So I didn't start at the beginning. I started right at the overture. Let's start again, right? I want to make sure that we get the timer right. Hi, Brazil. I just want to make sure we catch up a little bit. Hello, everyone. Yes. Um, feed me your questions too. I'm, I'm happy to answer as we, we go along. Oh, I, I know what happened. Yes. It's because they had a commercial in front or they had a, a, a notice to, to, um, donate to Broadway Cares or... Um, the Actress Fund, absolutely, you should do that. Um, so that is what, and I, that those links are in the description. So if you feel like it, please, please donate because it, people people need help. People need help right now, and we can help them. Okay. Um, I'm going to get this here. Okay. Now I think we're kind of line up with this yes trevor nunn okay yep good i'm thinking about a second ahead but we're good designed by john napier i mean amazing designs amazing nigel wright produced the music And I love this part about the um, overture in the film because in the Broadway show, we would run out with green eyes, um, these little lights that would light up. And um, I thought they translated that really well into the film. Here's the spaceship part. Oh my God, this overture is so 80s. I don't even know where you get those sounds. I've never heard them before. It's just like this... That, like, spaceship sound is so cats. I remember um, the first time that I opened on Broadway and this overture started. I was just like, I cannot believe this is about to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, musical staged, choreographed, everything by our, our fearless leader, Jillian Lynn. God, I just love her so much. I love that that drum. Bum 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 ba. It's so fun. The run up. Ba-dum. And then look at that beautiful set with that beautiful moon. So good. Okay, so now what's happening here? Is a tr we're in a junkyard. The train uh, the the train the car comes across that's Demeter Demeter has been kidnapped by Monkestrap she knows that all of uh, McCavity sorry 
She knows that all of the cats come together tonight on this one night to have this jellical ball. And she knows that if she can escape McCavity, she can get to the rest of the tribe and be safe. Look at those twins. Cory Capat and Tentamile. Brilliant. They're just stunning in this movie. Demeter, played by Ava Mary. Gorgeous. Look at Michael Gruber. Look at this. Stunning. Just handsome leading man. Look at that. Look at that makeup. So all these opening lines are questions. Um, and they're supposed to confront the audience. Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Because we can. And we're jellical. And we're just slightly better than the human race. And the choreography is interesting and odd and strangely feline. That voice, Ken Page, are you kidding me? Yes. And, it's, and then we're saying, you sit down and we'll tell you a story. Oh, I haven't seen this in forever, so it's so fun because it, to me it's like, okay, close up. Um, to me it's like if you went back to a high school reunion, reunion or a college reunion or something, like this is like, um, and then to have that on video, it's kind of crazy just to see all these faces and people and remembering everything. Oh, I love this. I love this trapeze. She was so good at that. It was always Tumble Brutus and on Broadway. So I love that it was etc. Speak with your bombs? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. That picture that I'm backstage taking, I'm taking a picture of... I'll tell you in a second. So, oh, this is my favorite part. Choir on the tire. And I love this. The little cats are queens of the night. And this was um, us just singing joyfully. There's so much joy in the show. And the boot. Okay, so the boot is supposedly, we, supposedly, we are out singing in this junkyard and there's a house or, or an apartment building next door and they're tired of listening to the cats just howl. So they throw the, throw the boot out the window to get us to shut up. And now here we go with our favorite, my favorite, our Pledge of Allegiance. The mystical divinity. So yeah, the direction here was you must sing this like you're singing the Pledge of Allegiance for your own country. And that, that pride that you have for, for wherever you're from and whoever you are. And the middle finger must be touching the knuckle of this middle finger. I think, oh, it's just the detail that Jillian had for this. And I love these shots because you can really see everybody and you can see all of the makeup. Here's some of my favorite lyrics. Feline, fearless, faithful, and true. 
Come on, T.S. Eliot. Come on. You better write some lyrics. I love that time. So, in, um, I can never hear this without, uh, hearing our musical director who was on the click track so we could hear him. And he had this great accent and he would always, go, we'd always go, Jellicles who? And he'd go, three, four. And then we'd do it. So, from that moment on, any production, every time I've seen Cats, um, I always hear three, four in my brain. This, these lyrics, oh my gosh, took about, uh, I was probably like three weeks into the show till I finally figured out what they were for, what they were. There was a lot of cats, cats. Oh, I used to love political cats. I would do that. I'd get in trouble. Oh, Simon Lee. Thank you, Hans Kreefall. Simon Lee, three, four. And then here we are, Broadway. Ah, 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 ah. Shwa. So if you also look in the opening, on that position, it's the very first time that we as cats really open up and present ourselves fully. And if you, like, a, like an animal protects itself and only when they feel completely comfortable do they like open and let you see their belly so that's sort of what that interpretation is is that we're fine you're gonna stay there we're gonna do that and so we open now we get into naming of cats we're at the naming of cats And I just fell down. If you, <laughs> I've never seen that. That is so funny. So I totally tripped over someone's foot and fell down, or like I stumbled to get down. Um, I love naming of cats. So we're at naming of cats. Um, if you do the counter, this is where we should be on YouTube on the YouTube live. Okay, I'm doing it through YouTube, not um another streaming service so we shot this movie over th it took three months to film we rehearsed for a month all of these people are from different companies all around the, the world and we came together and we made this definitive production really um, and we took every time they did cats it was a little different um, it was it was not like a book. There was not like a a Bible book, what they call the Bible for for a show, um, of choreography, and it was just set the exact same way. Um, it was sort of always a little bit changed up for whoever was doing it. So then we had to take all these different companies and put them together as one and figure out, oh, let's steal that from Broadway. Let's do this from London. Let's do this from Paris. Let's take this from the Humber Company. So we rehearsed for about a month and then we shot for about two months, which was makeup every day, 5 a.m., sitting in a chair. Um, we had makeup artists do our makeup. For the show, you do your own makeup. And for the movie, we did... Um, we had someone, we had different makeup artists do our makeup because it had to be the same every single day. So they, so you would go in, 5 a.m., sit, they do their makeup, then a full dance, full ballet class, um, and then we'd get ready and um, we would go start filming. Hear my little cat wanting to get into the room. So people are asking um, if we recorded the vocals before, and the answer is yes. And then we sang live during the filming.
and now I love this next part. This is to me just quintessential Jillian Lynn. So feline. Look at that opening. And this is Phyllida, who is just stunning. It's so odd and beautiful and otherworldly. And I love this part when she goes down the leg and then you see her little claws and she's just clawing up. And then this, she comes up and it's just a surprise. This leg just keeps going, keeps going. And then a releve and hold. And then I'll bring it down. And then I shall split. And then reaching up to the moonlight. No, it's not really her coming of age yet. It's just, she's just, and it's, this is pure innocence. This is pure innocence in the moonlight. That's why she's in white. And then I say, we got to get this party started. And I thank her for doing such a beautiful job, but I'm going to move you aside and we're going to invite everybody in. Okay, so when I was telling you that we were recording this, the first time I ever met Andrew Lloyd Webber on the film was I was in the recording studio with the earphone, you know, doing the whole thing, living my best life. And um, in, the, in the booth walks Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber while I'm recording a song of his. And I'm thinking, oh my God. Um, so I just kept thinking, oh wait, wait till you see me dance, please let me let me dance for you first. <laughs> um, and then we recorded that song for about two hours. Yep, he just kept asking for more and making changes. And then I think eventually it was like, all right, well we'll fix it. We'll fix it. Okay, so this is where I missed the whole point of this. This is really the story. We all come together and we pick one person that's going to get reborn. Um, cats have nine lives, so who will get their new life tonight? Um, and we're all very excited. And of course, Ginny and Jelly have already been here. They've we all got the tele invitations. It's happening at this junkyard. Ginny and Jelly have been there earlier. They put up Christmas lights. They've decorated it all. Um, and now we just do a little. We do a show, and I think, well, certainly it's my time, so I stand up and ready to do my number. And then Monkestrap reminds me that, nope, you're not yet. You're later in the night. So he gets all embarrassed. Okay, keep going. I'm going to be right back. I've got to let my cat in. And I make the car boot go up the trunk, and there's Gumby. Look, it's a little monkey strap. I love this part because it's um, it's fully Andrew's sisters, and I love the nod. Um, um, I love the nod to, you know, we're about to do a um, a military time a military tap number, and um, just the fact that that paired with the like Andrew sisters. Um, Feeling is just so brilliant. It's brilliant on Andrew's part, Sir Andrew's part, ALW, um, that he he used that vocabulary. Thank you. His name is Oliver. 
because we found him, my cat, we found him on the street um, in the rain. He was just a little, little baby cat. And so we named him Oliver. Musical theater nerd. And these three girls, come on, these women. So, these aren't actually cockroaches. Um, they're the cats playing cockroaches. Um, Jenny and Edot has put this number together, and she's had rehearsal all week for it for the big for the big splashy number. And we've made our own Beatles costumes out of things that we found in the trash. So that's why um, we have like their trash bag suits and um, these big glasses, and we carry utensils. And this was a much longer number. Um, it's a much longer number in the show, and they just they cut it down for timing's sake, I believe. I'm actually not. I'm not in the tap number in the movie, but I was on Broadway. I actually liked not being in the tap number in the movie because this was a day off for me. <laughs> oh yeah, sell it, sell it, Bob. <laughs> And now everyone's congratulating her. Oh, she did such a good job. She's like, I know, I know, I know. And then what happens? Late as always with an entrance. So this is the amazing John Partridge. Um, he's just... I love his tucker. Okay, so now he's going to kick this ball of yarn, and I'm supposed to catch it, but in this take, it didn't happen. And I totally miss it. And they kept going. And I love that, I mean, we shot that maybe 30 times, um, and I only missed it once, and that's the one they use. I love this choreography. I think it's some of the best choreography in the show. Look at little syllabub. Although we call it, she's called Jemima. No. What is. Yeah, Jemima. She's Jemima in this. So she did they call Jemima or syllabub. Um, depends on what country and which production you're in. So I never danced this as Mistopheles, um, but when I was, I started the show as Pounceville and covered Mistopheles for six months, and um, uh, I used to love dancing this. And there we have the amazing Rosemary Ford. So Tucker, Tucker and um, Bombay Arena have a little thing. They like to, they like to play that they're not into each other, but they really are. I love that shot that she drops down into the split. So this is from. Um, I think this is just a nod of Andrew's, um, ALW's, um, love for rock and roll, you know, he is that, there is the, um, <laughs> so in the show, uh, he would run out in the audience and pick up somebody or get somebody and, um, uh, dance with them. 
and um, kind of cause havoc. So we couldn't really do that in the movie. So we came up with all this that he would run around in different vignettes. And um, I love that the the Ginny and Jelly were needle pointing, and um, that prop took like forever to make. I just remember these two people just for days and days do, making it, and then it it's on screen for like three seconds. So I guess, yeah, I mean, Tucker's based on Mick Jagger, um, Elvis, um, Little Richard, um, maybe a little David Boy in there. This always got a laugh and, and on Broadway or anywhere in the production. The girls going crazy for him. Just a real nod to the Beatles being on Ed Sullivan. And then this part was fun to dance because we could dance and then we could it was free boogie and sometimes you could just live your life in that free boogie and try not to get notes from the dance captain and here we have grizabella now i'll tell you the grizz story grizz used to be in our um i'm gonna take this out because it's easier to talk um used to be in our tribe and she decided to leave the tribe um, to go off and be a famous actress, if you will. Um, and that did not happen. And she ended up falling on hard times and maybe just was going to be the star and kind of fallen. And, um, and now she's coming back to ask for forgiveness. Again, she knows this night happens. This is the night the Jellicles happen, um, that we come together. Now, Demeter, who has been traveling around and escaped, has actually seen Grizabella walking around and knows who she is. So the adults, the adult cats in the, the tribe knows who Grizabella is. The younger cats don't know. That's why, um, Yes, Pounce was so rude. He's not rude. He just doesn't know. He's like, he doesn't know. So he comes up and he scratches her. But the other little kittens come up. See the little kittens here? They're coming up to smell her, to see who this is. And Jelly Lauren knows who she is and says, wait, 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 don't go there. Um, Bomb Valurina. And so Bomb, Bomb and Grizz should actually be closer in age. Um, they were sort of best friends. And then she left, and um, Grizabella left, which is why when they come back, there's this attitude about it. And she and Monkastrap have a little thing, and so she comes back in and she confronts him and says, are you gonna let me back in? And this is why Demeter knows, because Demeter has seen, ha, has been out in the world and has seen Grizabella walking around. And Tottenham Court, at the time that T.S. Eliot wrote this, was not really, from what I understand, was not a great area. A lot of drugs happening there, prostitution. So perhaps seeing her at Tottenham Court equated her with sort of a low sort of lifestyle. So she's not old, she's just fallen. And I love, I mean, the, the, the legendary Elaine Pay. I mean, she invented that, right? I mean, it's, it was just amazing to work with Elaine. Like that is Evita. That's Evita right there. That's Grizabella. Chess. And I love this look. Oh, 
that Rosemary gives. Oh my God, Rosemary, yes. That look of just, how dare you? Yes, I know. There's a lot of stories about this and I'm clearing it all up. So it's so interesting that they say, who would ever thought that that? The fact that we don't even call her a name, we call her a that. Um, and then we all learn her name, Grizabella. And I love um, Elaine's just take on it is so like, there's such a strength and inner strength that she walks in with, but yet she's on the outside like broken. So it's like, she's just hanging on by, by a thread. That's right. She's, she stands up and, yep, I still got it. Now, she just came off of playing Norma Desmond before this, so I think a little bit of that is in here. But here we are into Bust of Her. Just everyone's favorite. And Andrew's favorite. So he loves Bust of Her Jones, which is why there's an extra verse in this. Um, yeah. So... And we love Buster for so much. And it would be so nice and um, amazing if Buster for stopped and stayed and, and gave us a little story that we love so much. He's Buster for your favorite uncle. He's your favorite uncle that comes to the party and, you know, always has a little story to tell. And of course, I love him as Mustafeles. Mustafeles loves Buster for because we look the same. But he is not my dad. Oh yeah, so this is played by James Barron. He was um he was Bustifer. Um, I don't have many stories about him other than he was he was lovely. He really came in and he had um a day or two of shooting, I think. And um and then he was that was it. So I don't I don't have many stories about him. I mean I just love this choral, this choral sound here. It just felt good singing that that part, you know. And then the little ones, uh, the the younger kittens, and I'm, you know, think I'm all like this is the first time. So think of it like, I don't know. In America, we have like Thanksgiving. So we have these tables where, like, the adults sit, and then it, there's the kids' table at Thanksgiving. And this is the first time. Oh. Uh, everyone likes that licking of the lips part. Um, no, I didn't have to reapply that makeup. It didn't come off. That makeup is, is like, plaster on there. It's not moving. Um, so... Think of it as this. Is this the first time Mistopheles gets to sit at the big table? So I get to stand up with the big boys. And so when the little ones roll in and start playing, I get very upset. Like, don't ruin this for all of us. Now, Jenny loves Bustopher. She has a little crush on Bustopher. And everyone knows it. <laughs> And we've all seen that Buster for Jones cat walking around town. Um, we have one that comes by. It's just a street cat and he's just big and I'm just wondering where he eats. But now I can never get this part. Jillian wanted me to walk like somebody. She kept saying this person, um, a military person, and I, was, I couldn't really ever find who it was. So I just did my best. Yes, I love that. That he gives her a little flower and she faints. And then what's happened? McCavity wanted for everything. 
So we think it's McCavity, the meanest cat on the block, and everyone's going to hide. But it really was just the cops. And we hear this car. And so the big boys, the older ones, are going to protect. That's Alonzo and McCavity. And Monk and Strap. No, Ginny and Skimble are not a thing. Ginny and Skimble are, are friends. And here we go. Mungo Rump. Joe Gibb and Drew Varley. I mean, they are just... I've worked with a lot of Rumples and a lot of Mungos. And there have been some great duos. And this is... They are up there in the top. But I do want to say there have been some really great ones that are not on the film. That have just been fa fabulous. I think this is some of Jillian's best choreography, too. Of course, I say that about every, um, every number. This whole show is just brilliantly choreographed. Just absolutely brilliantly choreographed. It's not jazz or ballet. It's not... It's everything has its own vocabulary and it's not like Broadway choreography. Um, yeah. And choreographed in 1981 and not a pot of in it. You know, it doesn't look 80s. <laughs> so cheeky. She's so cheeky. So Joe and um, Drew were really good friends of mine during the filming. Joe and I kind of really connected and just hung out a lot. Um, I love that little step that they did. And then key change. And I think that's the hardest part of the whole show. So any Rumples or Mungos out there that are watching, you can let me know. This was good. Um, this is the only song that I know. It, people were asking if I prefer this song or the original. So the original song was a completely different meter. And um, same song, just different meter. I, I mean, I'm, I'm partial to this one because, um, I mean, just iconic, those uh, cartwheels. Um, And so then we we realize, the cats realize that it's just Mungo Rump and they're just, just causing havoc. So we go back and we we take their loot that they've gotten and we, um, we throw it at them. Let's see. Oh, now he, he picks up a sense. And I look to Monk and he says to the twins. And they know because the twins have this magical power. And then Monkestrap tells me, tells Mistopheles to go and escort Deuteronomy and the highest honor that I think that you can have. And now the cats are going to clean themselves and listen to the story of Old Deuteronomy. Now.
Yeah, Drew is... I mean, it's... That number's hard. So, Old Deuteronomy does not come to every Jellicle Ball. Um, he... I guess an invitation is maybe always sent, but he just says he doesn't always show up. So the fact that he is showing up at this one is a huge ordeal. And there's a reason why he's showing up at this. <laughs> so my friend Hans, who was in the Broadway company with me, is watching. And he reminded me of selfishly stretching. Yes. So you had to make a weird shape, but you couldn't... Um, you weren't supposed to pull focus on that, on that stretch. Um, and one time, in, from the back of the theater, Jillian yells, two people are selfishly stretching. So we were, pull, somebody was pulling focus. I don't know. And this was a really hard part because you could only have one hip and one hand on the floor and the rest of your body had to be up and somehow... And we see Deuteronomy coming from afar, and we get into our our wedge. Uh oh. No. Oh, and here is here he is. The legend that is Ken Page. He is Deuteronomy. When he walks in the room, it's like Santa Claus. It's just he's there and he goes, All right, Tugger, I see you. What are you gonna do? Be cheeky and he's reverent. And he says, There you go. I've taught you well. And then listen to this voice. So Ken was the original monk, uh, Deuteronomy and on Broadway. And then to get to play it again, so many... Uh, I don't know how many years later, but so now that he's here, we can proceed on with the show that we've done. So this Peaks and Pollicles is really Monkestrap's moment to tell the story of the Peaks and Pollicles, which are dogs. So now, as cats, we're going to make fun of these dogs. And this is really just um, done as a... Uh, ...show for Deuteronomy. There are so many words here. I mean... And Gruber's just so fantastic at doing this. So a verse was cut there. So this is, um, yeah, Mongo and Rump. They play the peak and the pollicle.
but they kind of missed rehearsal because they were out stealing stuff. So, so they mess it up. No. They didn't mess up the barks, for real. So here are the cats playing big dumb dogs. <laughs> I love that moment with um, Pounceville. And of course, Tucker comes in to mess it all up because he wasn't at rehearsal. And he wants this to be all about him. And um, Monka's Trap tries to save it. And getting frustrated that the number is not going the way he wants it to go. So the reason why he's screaming is because we're just we're we've just lost the plot and we're just doing what we want to do and he's trying to calm us down and get back onto the track. So he was supposed to enter from the other side, and then he missed rehearsal, of course. And um, so this is really isn't really isn't a different cat. This is um, Amidas playing the Great Rumpus Cat. So this is played by the um, fantastic Frank Thompson. who is a great dance captain for the show, um, and then has become a an, an really fantastic choreographer himself. And this great costume, just like with the shading. So again, Rumpus Cat is all part of the show. He's not a cat that comes that's different. This is a costume. Yes, Monk needs a stage manager. And we're ready for the big finale. And then Tugger just interrupts it again. Like, hey. I love singing this part too. Um, okay, we have a, so how did his, um, hair stand up? Um, it was somehow attached. There was a little string that he pulled in the back and the hair went up. Now we're going to get punished by our fearless leader saying we should not make fun of Um, we should not make fun of dogs, that we are all the same. And now McCavity is real this time in here because he has heard that Deuteronomy is here. 
and everyone is hidden and monkey strap is making sure that everything's fine and somehow it looks like Deuteronomy's scared but it really is just Mistopheles behind him and he says Mistopheles trying to be a big kid now and he's sent off to the pipe and monkey strap is not going to leave Deuteronomy's side and Deuteronomy moves him aside and says it's okay and little Victoria being innocent not knowing what's happened or what the sound is is investigating and her little best friend Jemima comes out and they say oh hello friend This is the amazing Jason Gardner playing Alonzo in a black and white costume, which I like. Um, so in London, the costume for Alonzo was black and white. They changed it for Broadway, um, and I prefer the black and white costume. And Jason was a great friend, too. I had many notes about that airs and graces because I was doing a hard American air, air, and they were like, um, they didn't want that hard R in there. Yes, Brise's. Come on, Brise's. And then we just whirl ourselves up into a sort of frenzy and then open up into this big jellical cats. And then we go into the ritual, which I think this lighting is just so stunning. And fill it in there. And what I love about this is the ritual is, is the same in every production everywhere. Um, and this coming down, this is a nod um, pre-masquerade happening. And, uh, and Phantom. And I love that wherever you are, if you're anywhere that someone says, um, oh, they were in Cats, you can start the ritual and everyone will do it. And it's really sort of this universal language that we all have. And reaching back and chest to the moonlight, receiving the moonlight. And then we're drugged by the moon. We're possessed, shaking it out tension and then it hits us and then we start this um, frenzy yeah it's nod to phantom except for this is before phantom so really phantom is the nod to cat so I didn't in this in the in the movie I got to do the um, downstage part which was called firebird 
Um, but I did not do that in the Broadway show. So I was so excited when I was got to do Firebird. British Airways. This is supposed to be seeing an airplane, a British airplane going across the sky, which is why we follow it and we head roll. Don Q step. Oh my gosh. Jillian rehearsed me for hours on this. Hours that Don Q step. I think I've got it. Then Alonso says, hello, friend, I'll show you. And I say, yes. And then I dance with Pounceville. And here comes Tumble Brutus, the lovely Fergus who Fergus was actually a Mistopheles at the time in the London production. So a lot of these people were in the London production and they would we they would be up at five, make up, we would film until five, um, and then they would leave and go do the show at night. Isn't that crazy? So Fergus would be there shooting all day long, as, and Joe and I believe... Um, Mungo Rump, yeah, Joe and... Uh, yeah, they were in the show too. So, as, along with a couple of other people. So, I can't believe it. Oh, this is uh, Honky Tonk. Isn't this, that's what this is called. This is Honky Tonk section. Yeah, Joe and Drew were in the show. And they would leave and go do the show at night. I don't know how they did it. So this is usually Monkestrap and Pounceville, but since Fergus was Mistopheles, um at night, I think they let they changed this to be Tumble Brutus. And I just want to point for the record that Fergus in that section is on the right counts, and I'm the one that's off the counts. That's why we're not jumping together. I was late. Fergus was right. I'm Full disclosure, going on the record. Whirly gigs. Um, again, I'm supposed to be bent over a little bit more, but I think that was probably the 25th take, and I was just like, oh my god, I can't do this anymore. And um, that's the one they used. I love this little solo. And just, it's effortless. And we receive the light. And we part the mist. Something's different. Something's coming. And sort of, so this is now. Now you were asking earlier, this is really the awakening of Victoria. So the first solo is not is very innocent, and this one is a little um, less innocent. Just beautiful, everyone's just. And then something is happening here. Yes, Bren. Bren plays um, Plato and McCavity, same actor, but different roles. So Plato is not McCavity. So we see that Grizabella has come back, and I say, let's get this party started again, and I turn on the lights, and we go into my favorite part. And we dance. No, it's not a mating dance. 
It's just like, it's not really mating. It's like, even my cats do it. They just get together and they they lick each other and they, they clean each other and they just like snuggle up with each other. And it's a safety, it's a community. And that's what that is, is that we're just coming together and we're just like, um, it's not really that we're all mating. It's that we're, we're connecting as a community. Jate's going across. I think this is shot so well. So exciting. Ladies Latin that gets cut and mm, the build up. This was so fun to dance. He is so dark and dangerous. Unofficial lyrics. Big boys come in. So this really, Jillian wanted to um, really sort of she was inspired by, I think, Jerome Robbins at this point, and that we have these two groups, male against female, um, trying to up one another with dancing. Look at John Partridge dancing. Come on. I think he might be the only tugger that has danced this part. And that's because John started as an Alonzo and the West End Company and graduated up to tugger. This section was so it was a little different for me. So I, they, I did not do this section, and then came in for Warsaw here. But in New York, I had to do that whole section. And when I joined the London production, I had to do that whole section. So only in the film is Mistopheles not in that section. And I love this drag step, drag step, drag step. Reach and reach, swipe and serve and ah uh, and sha. Yes, and this is just, you're putting it all out on the table. And at this point in the ball, you're so freaking exhausted because you've been dancing for 11 minutes and you just have to give everything you got to do this and get those legs up into the sixes. Da, 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 um, ba, um, ba, um, cha. Da, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Run up, and then your last jeté for your life, and end on the floor. And then we think we've done such a brilliant job that we turn around and we say, aren't, aren't we so great? Deuteronomy? Like, what do we do? And then Grizabella comes and we think that she's interrupting again and we get really upset. And I love this. John just walks by, pops his collar, and keeps walking. And little Jemima saying, well, I I'll touch you. And the older cats say no. And Demeter doesn't know what to do. And Monk just turns and walks away from her. And little Victoria almost touches her. <gasps> and I love that. I love that. Susan Jane just was like, no. I know that Vilada is just that face. It's like a little anime face. 
And I just love that part. I kind of love that part because it gives a chance for Ginny and Jelly to show something else. And they show this fierceness toward Grizabella. And now this dance is just Grizabella all alone. She thinks she's alone. And she's going to relive the moment. She says, well, I can still do it. I can still dance the ball. And she sees her hand not looking so good. And she tries to do this step and her back hurts. And she's like, well, maybe I can still speak with my bum. And it's just not working the way that she wants it to. And I love this walk here. Yes. And how it just fades away. thing I loved about working with Elaine is that um you know I just any job that I do I just try to like observe as much as possible because one I started so young and um I just wanted to really learn my craft from the legends that were I've had the pleasure of working with and so for her it was just just watching her and like learning she was such an amazing actress like Yes, she's known for this amazing voice. I mean, that is memory right there, singing. Um, the voice of memory. But it just, her acting, she knew every moment. She worked through every moment. I just was Im impressed and inspired by her. she really does think she's by herself at this point and Deuteronomy sees her for the first time and really learning about her story this costume is so beautiful too so it used to be they would take they would take um yeah they would take a coat they would make a coat out of like muslin or fabric and they would take these um fur pieces and actually glue them on to make this and then they would like rip it and shred it and um it basically weighed nothing and it was like so um about to fall apart but it was stunning because most of the time people wear these fur coats in other productions and they're like amateur productions and they're just too big you know and she has to look like she's on her last leg and she walks and she thinks okay well that's it I'll walk away. And then Deuteronomy takes this step. And she hears something and thinks, oh, is there someone there? And she reaches back. And she reaches back. Is someone there? Anyone going to touch me? And she realizes that maybe it's just, it's not worth it. And walks away. And from this point, Deuteronomy knows who must be chosen? So that was usually intermission. And of course we can't have intermission. Um, so this was the beginning of Act 2, which was always a really fun part because it it doesn't sound like an opening of an act two. Um, and so we would just kind of come back in and it was really fun live because you would be able to crawl through the audience. 
um, kind of come through people, um, come out whenever you wanted. Well, no, it's all time, so not whenever you wanted, but it was a great time to play. And here we have the, the amazing Sir John Mills, who played Gus. Trap the leader showing reverence to um, Gus. Would I work with John Partridge again? I would work with any of these people again in a heartbeat. In the moments of happiness, um, It's really Deuteronomy's moment to tell us about the reflection that he's just he's just had with Grizabella. He's ju just learned this information, and now he has to somehow convey to us that we need to come together and forgive Grizabella. Um, we need to look in our own lives and realize that we've all been there, are all capable of being there. Um, and that we are all one and that we're we're sort of the same and that we can um any of us could this could happen to any of us and we need to come together but we have to find it out as a group which is sort of the brilliance of deuteronomy is he doesn't tell us who to choose we have to come together to figure out who to choose collectively the twins and they receive the energy from the ground and Jemima stands up and sings now this used to be I'm sorry I'm just watching and she's the voice of innocence and if we find there what the meaning of happiness is, it's beautiful poetry, beautiful poetry. So originally, Jemima was Sarah Brightman in the original. And I sort of believe, I don't know, because I wasn't there, but I think this is why that was written for Sarah. And from here, Sarah goes on to play Christine in The Phantom. I used to love this part. And then we we're supposed to feel the energy coming from the floor as if like a like a tree, like the roots of a tree coming into you and the energy building, building, building. So you have nothing else to do but to stand up and one count stand. And we rehearsed that for hours, hours. We would just be down and they would go and Jillian would go and stand and we'd have to be up in a second. Hi, Fergus. I just gave you a really good shout out earlier. I'm so glad you're here. And Gus starts to walk away because he doesn't quite know where he is. Perhaps a little dementia. And Deuteronomy says, oh, Gus, won't you, won't you stay and sit? 
and tell us a story. And he, I think he's a little too nervous or doesn't quite know what's happening. So his, his caretaker, Jelly, is going to say it for him. And I love that little shoulder that she does just to comfort him. So great. His name is really Asparagus. Come on. Come on. Um. So a couple of things. People are asking, what are we supposed to be looking at in the stand? It's sort of just you're entranced by this light and this new world or new life that you kind of see for yourself and then it disappears, this vision sort of disappears. So this is the amazing, oh my God, Sue Jane Tanner, who was the original Jelly Lorem in 1981. She created Jelly Lorem legend and they invited her back to um do the show to be jelly lorem in the movie i think that's just wonderful <laughs> yeah, she Sue is really the a, a brilliant Jelly Lorem because she created it. So Gus always gets me. He's just so sweet. And so Gus is always supposed to be here. It's, it's not like he just wandered in. He just was a little slower getting here than everyone else. So, um, and it's pretty much known that this is Gus's year, that he's probably gonna be picked. Um, I just love this um, this idea of a cat being in a theater, and I I guess um, and they would they would have cats to keep out the rats. So when he says Dick Winnington's cat um, in Panto, we don't have this in America, but in pantomime, there's the um, the. Uh, uh, the 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 gesture of that you slap your knee and that's um, Dick Winnington sort of his gesture so ooh Jen mm -hmm. usually yeah Gus likes a little Jen. so you can see me sitting up there and I can tell you that bumper was about an inch wide two inches wide and um i'm literally just holding just core work the whole time holding myself up on that bumper
So he has that line, the theater's certainly not what it was. And I can tell you on the last night of Cats on Broadway, um, and in London, because I was there for the last night, um, uh, it, it brought down the house. It literally stopped the show for for a while, and people just applauded. So this is the ghost of his younger self playing in the opera Growl Tiger. And it disappears. Um, who, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat. Who played, uh, Amidas, who was, um, I believe Tony, Tony Timberlake played. So in, in the, in the other productions, oh, this breaks my heart. And then he doesn't know where he's at. And he only really recognizes Jelly Lorem and she takes him. And Jelly gives a little nod to Deuteronomy that she'll take care of him and we'll go off and we'll we'll come back later. We'll we'll collect him and come back. And then Deuteronomy sees Skimbleshanks and says, Ah, this will get everybody going. So then everyone's favorite uncle, Skimbleshanks, played by the amazing Jeff Garrett. Just so funny. Oh my god, Jeff Jeff Garrett, one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life, had me in stitches the entire time. And this was fun because I got to be in Skimble... in the movie, but not on Broadway. So on Broadway, I would have exited and started to get dressed for the Mistopheles number, but here, because it was all cuts, um, I was able to be in it. And in London, he's in it too, so the, the break is shorter, which makes it harder. Thank you, everyone. And we make this train, and the people are sleeping, these are the passengers. So there's been a lot of... Um, I'll finish this and I'll, I will talk about the pirates, I promise, everyone. There's a lot of chat about pirates. I prefer the pirates. Short answer, I prefer the pirates. It's very fun to do. Um, oh, it's a, it's a real gold piece. I'll keep that one. That's what he says. I love Skimble. been some great skimbles. And as Pounceful, I got to be in the little circle and listen to the story, but um, that was it. Um, the girls always hated the step because it really, I think, hurt to rock on your 
um, on your pelvis bones like that. <laughs> And then the brilliant John Napier designed this amazing set that now, so you've sat and you've watched the whole thing all night and then suddenly we make this train. So yeah, the train is just all stuff that it's bicycle wheels. It's a um, big fabric. It's a it's a um, a big pipe that this becomes the smokestack. They're um, these piston things. Um, sometimes they're Q-tips, uh, and we just we um, make this train. And then we think we have it all together, and then suddenly it all falls apart. Poor Skimble. And you'll see different cuts here. So he walks up, and he's up, and he's up, and he's all the way up. And then on this cut, he's not. And then he is. So now we're back to McCavity. And this time, McCavity really is here. And we can hear his... Laughter and there he is lurking. There was a there was a question of McCavity's part of this tribe, and the answer is no. And I think this is one of the best costumes. So when I was pounceful, I had to be one of those henchmen. And one night my wig fell over my face and I couldn't see and I fell out and I ran right off the stage into the audience. That was a really, um, one of my most embarrassing moments on stage. And then here we go with McCavity number and these two women are just exquisite. So at this point, Demeter's just frenzied. She's she's escaped um, McCavity, and now McCavity is here to collect her back. I love that they have these gloves. These girls, they get to wear the gloves and not the arm warmers. It's just those like those little details that just make a designer like that has so much storytelling in that glove. So it's not that McCavity has magical powers. It's just that we all have... Um, once again, sorry. I get I like ADD back and forth. I'll tell you this about McCavity later. Here comes Rosemary. Come on. Just a star. Now, Rosemary was a host on... 
believe it's called come dancing so my english friends you can help me i believe that's right and um i didn't know what that was when i went over to film this in 97 and then they told me that um you know it was a ballroom show so people would come on television and compete in ballroom dancing on tv and i thought that is the craziest idea who is going to watch a show where people are competing in ballroom dancing and um you know cut to now dancing with the stars so um what did i know but yeah she was the host of that So Bomb also knows McCavity, and this is about, like, Cavity's a bad boy, but secretly that she kind of likes him. Strictly Come Dancing, yes. Thank you, Rosie. That's what it's called. And Ava used to dance on, the Demeter, Ava used to dance on a show called Hot Topic. No, Hot Gossip, Hot Gossip. Hot Topic is an 80s <laughs> mall, um, store in the mall, Hot Gossip. And that's where she met Jillian. And um, yes, I just love the connection with them there. Oh. And then they come back together. It's just... It's great. It's just, a, this is a great duet for females and musical theater. They're not competing against each other. They're there. They're just, they're living, they're owning this number. They're owning their sexuality. They're just, um, I think it's just bravo. It's just one of the best numbers ever written for musical theater. So Demeter lets us know that Mungo does has worked for McCavity. But Mungo's not mean. He's he's not bad. He's just got mixed up and sometimes had to do a little job. Ah, uh, this backup dance is so fun. Shoulder, 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 and then Broadway kick. Whack, ba, flick. And walk scan 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 is he over there oh no is he over there uh i don't know is he up there i can't take it anymore so i gotta kick my legs no mungo doesn't still work from my cavity yes Come on, Jillian Lynn. Excellent. And now, Monkers, uh, McCavity says, look, I'm not all bad. I'll give you back your leader. And everyone goes in to see him, except for Demeter thinks something's not quite right. And then she goes and she's like, get away, get away. And everyone doesn't understand. This is Deuteronomy. And she goes to Monkish Trap and she says, something's not right. Something's afoot. And she jumps on his back and we do a turn and it really is Macavity. That costume is just so great. And it has all these things that stick out from it to look like this prickly fur. It's awesome. That slow motion jump. Come on. And I know they rehearsed this a long time. And this lift is really a really difficult lift for the guy because he's reversed. Um, it's easier if he's flipped the other way. Because uh, you're 
it won't she she's more secure because she won't like fall this way she kind of it's really easy for her to fall so but jason's just an amazing partner um so it was great it was great fun to have that And the McCavity fight. Here's the McCavity fight, Hans. Oh, the fight. Every night they talk about the fight. And, Mc and Mon Monka Strap is the are going after McCavity. McCavity puts him in a trance. And they go and they fight, 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 fight. And he goes and he injures Monka Strap so Alonzo jumps in and he and he and Alonzo sort of at least injures McCavity and injures him and gets injured himself. So one of his arms is he's injured. So now he's getting cornered. So everyone and I, I love that Jelly Lorem is like get out of here. So Yes, and he goes and he just takes the, there's a battery, battery, um, car battery, and he puts the two things together and it sort of causes um, the electricity to go out in the place. So it's not that he's electri um, electrifying us, that's not the right word, um, but uh, is that he turns off the power. And... Demeter thanks Monka Strap for saving her life. Now, McCavity is not magical, okay? He can't disappear and show up and, and make people disappear and show up on a barge somewhere. That is not McCavity. McCavity is just that cat that causes havoc and then you turn around and he's somewhere else sitting and like acting like nothing has happened. So now, Tugger's like, okay, we got to do something. Who can fix this? Mustafelis. It's weird for me to watch this, so I probably won't watch it so much. But I'll let it play. Yeah, they're real collars. Um, not real cat collars. They're they're made, but they're made to look like real collars and and in the scale of everyone. I love this in the show. Like it was just um, this one big flashlight that he's holding that was the only light source. I just thought that was so amazing. We couldn't really do that in the film, but in theater, um, we could do that. And these background vocals I've never heard in my life. We never heard that until we saw the, the movie. And here, Mistopheles comes. And it make the rope disappear, which doesn't really happen. Um, okay, I can tell you a few things here. <laughs> and now I just blow up the set, basically, is what happens. So, everyone's asking about the lighted jacket. There's two little buttons that you, like... Um, or metal pieces between these two fingers. And when you do this, it connects the circuit and the light, and there's all lights in the jacket. And so it lights up. So sometimes you can see me doing this. Um, it was, either, I think it was the, I think it was these fingers that they would do. Um, so he does come from the roof on that rope. And we did it in this theater, which was a whole lot taller than um the i have to turn the volume off for a second but i'll keep going because i can't it's too much um 
the uh, 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 the 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 Adelphi Theater was much taller than the Winter Garden Theater, and so I went up to the catwalk. And on, in New York, there's all these safety things. There was like a thing for my foot to go in. There was like a a thing that I held on to, and um, uh, like you know, in the circus kind of thing, there was like a, a wrist thing, and I felt very comfortable. And I could come down, and usually it, when I was doing it, I could come down and like swing my leg out and then pull it in really fast and just like spin, 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 spin all the way down. Um, it was really fun. So when I got there and I was like, okay, we're going to do the rope. And I go up, uh, this thing is a, a rope. It is just a rope. And, um, I have gloves on too. And they were like, okay, great. So basically I just held on for dear life. So when you see that, that shot of me coming down, um, we did it a couple of times. Um, Look at those jetés. Look at those jetés. Come on. I am a little proud of those jetés. Um, uh, when we did it, I, I only did it like a couple of times. And then finally I said, I, I, I'm too, I, like, I, I can't do this again. Um, so, uh, yeah. So basically it was just hold on and come on. So if you watch it, I'm just holding on for dear life. Now this, uh, now we're to the red uh, blanket part. Also, 30 times bigger than the Broadway one. Um, I don't know why it was so big. It didn't need to be that big. And um, it was really hard to work with. <laughs> so it, every shot is me going like with this fabric, trying to work it out. The Bolts of Lightning come post-production. Early CGI. I did not really shoot lightning. Sorry to ruin everyone's dreams. Um, yeah, so this number on stage was about seven, seven minutes and they, they cut it down to like a minute and four, a uh, minute and 40 seconds. Um, but anyway, he makes Deuteronomy reappear. And it's sort of the first time that he's never done this trick before. So he's just hoping that I'm talking Mustafa's now. He's just hoping that it works. So he's so proud of himself that it worked. And he runs and he jumps into his dad's arms. Yes, I'm going to tell you that right now. It's why they both have magical powers. Although he doesn't know that. Yes, they do tape. I do have, I actually have the footage of the full thing, um, but I can't, I can't uh, release it. Come on. Come on, toe touches. And I want to tell you that tire was about uh, so high, so much higher than on Broadway. Um, and then when I leaped off of it, I was literally like, uh, I don't know how tall I was, but it was high. And I actually hurt hurt my foot. Um, and um, I like, um, I didn't break it, but I bruised the bottom of the, like where your pads of your foot are really badly. And ever since it's not been the same. But, um, uh, yeah, so I jumped off that tire probably 30, 30 times. And um, I finally, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be, you know, uh, a diva about it. But that one, it was the rope, the rope one and the jump off the tire that I finally was like, I can't do it anymore. No, you've got it. Um, so, yeah. But we took a whole day to shoot the Mistopheles number. And, and the thing that was um, uh, kind of... Jillian really wanted to keep the Mistopheles number as one full shot. She wanted to do it in one shot. So we just kept filming it and filming it and filming it and filming it. And um, it, was, it was tough. And then they cut it down. So now... Sorry. I could talk more about that. Maybe I will. But... 
we got to get to Grizabella. So she comes in one last time. And I love that moment when John Johnny goes, "You want you want to say something? Say it." He he just presents, and they still won't let her. And Deuteronomy says to, "Please say it. I've heard you say this before. Now tell everyone." Uh, yeah, the tail in this number is shorter than the than the regular tail because of the weight and having to do all the tricks. It just was easier. But I, that was from the original Wayne Wayne Sleep, the original Mustafelis. Amazing, amazing Wayne Sleep. Who really created that number with Jillian and I. Uh, so much to be I owe so much to him for creating that character uh, I mean when she says that it's a smile of the old days and she just you can see her seeing it This moment when she sees the someone Can you see my cat? What's happening back here? So we were always told you can turn around anywhere between the top of the song and the time that Grizabella falls. It's up to you as an actor to come up with the time that you wanted to do. I always chose the violins because I just thought that was the most dramatic. So that's where I decided to turn around. But also the, the thought of that, of what she's going through. And then little Jemima stands up, little syllabub. Oliver's going crazy. She stands up. That little look back that she does, Elaine does to us, it's so easy to leave me, is really um, to bomb and, and monkey strap that is standing over there. Um, it's just heartbreaking. And it's amazing that this, this, like, this, she made this song iconic. I mean, this is just iconic Broadway memory it's it's been in every language possible and everyone knows the song and now little Victoria just she looks back is it okay and Deuteronomy says yes it's okay and she goes and she touches her and she touches her and relief and love and forgiveness 
And I love this part, all walking down, offering my hands, the reverence. And everyone And we come together as a group. And that this right here is what the show is about. It's about forgiveness. It's about community. It's about unity. It's about that we have to do this together. And she thinks that she doesn't quite understand that she is the one that's picked. She can't believe it. go and Deuteronomy now is going to make things happen that we've never seen and what is so amazing about this this moment is that this is when the mega musical took over this is when Broadway changed can you imagine sitting in that theater in 1981 and 1982 on Broadway and this tire goes up out of nowhere. Game changer. Changed the game of musicals. A tire. This started it all. And we can't believe it. We can't believe this is happening. We've never seen anything like this. Now this is the first, I can tell you, this is the first shot that they did of this. Because they used so much smoke and it was coming out. And you can see us, there's some shots where you can see us being like, we're all just coughing. Everyone is hacking and coughing down there because there is so much smoke. And um, then we shot it a lot of times again and again and again with not as much smoke. But the, but the one that they use is the first shot when they had all the smoke. And then I love this, this staircase that comes down and she walks up. There's others that this thing comes down, she gets in it, takes her off this like spaceship thing. I think the staircase is the most successful. And this, this music and it's just so beautiful and really so hard to sing and you're bending over and you're singing these incredibly high notes and you do the you push her off with the with the neck of your wrist Jillian used to say use the neck of your wrist darling which I guess is this part I don't know what the neck of your wrist is but here it is Listen to our fearless leader. Give us sort of, um, he thanks us for doing the right thing. So we shot this with 12 cameras at the beginning. We did a couple of runs with just 12, I think it was 12 cameras everywhere. So usually on Broadway, when you're standing and listening to him or in the show, wherever you're at, your back is to the audience. So you can like breathe, you know, cause you're, you're done for the night. But here we couldn't do any of that at any time. We had to be on all the time. So these close-ups are fantastic.
Uh, this is stuff that I've been told. Everyone's asking me if this is made up or, or you know, is this what we worked out ourselves? Um, this is the stuff that Jillian told me, that Trevor told me. Um, and so it's the best to my, uh, as I remember. Cats is one of those things that everyone seems to have a little different memory of. Um, sorry for the pun, but yes. And, um, but this is what I can tell you. This is my take. And this is what I remember being told. And we stand and we say, we say to the audience, have you learned anything tonight? And we go, we go out to them. And yes, I think that part was cut. And I used to love this. Oh, this music, this orchestration. It's just graduation. It sounds like graduation. I love that moment, Ken. I love that moment, Ken. Licks and then does this personal taste. I mean, it's so genius. And then we push our, down our fur. We show off ourselves. Yes. And so I just stole mine from Don Q because I came from Ballet World. So I just gave you full Don Quixote um, ballet. That's what I'm giving you right there. Here we go. And then Ken hits this B flat. Amazing. Holding it out. I remember the first time he did that, I was like, what the? Oh my God. Stunning. Victory. Ah, oh, it's such a good show. I just love it so much. And I'm just. I'm just so thankful for everything that it has given me in my life. I'm so thankful that I can, you know, all these years later at 1030 on a Saturday morning, um, click in and do this commentary and have so many of you that are still here. Um, it's, I'm really proud of it. Oh my God, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> um, I'm just really proud of it and proud of um, the work that everyone did and the friendships that, that uh, formed out of this. And um, just so proud that uh, it has touched so many people in so many different ways and that it's so important to people and uh, they still love it. And um, I was just talking to somebody the other day who's been in the show a couple of times and... Um, you know, the fact that they said, I grew up watching you and you made me want to dance. And um, yeah, and just, you know, and just to see a boy dancing and made it okay for boys to dance. Um, something that I'm, I'm just really proud of that. And um, it is not lost on me. And that's what I want to say. And I, I just think, Thank all of you for being there, being fans, loving the show, commenting, um, following me on social media, and uh, and just um, being there when I need you sometimes. And it's been it's been really great. It's been a really fun ride. It's been amazing. Um, there's a there's a tagline that you know we say in in the cat's world now and forever, and um, I really do believe that. <laughs> 
like this is now and forever it will always be a part of my life um and uh yeah that's what it is i'm so thankful and so um blessed and honored to be part of it and proud to be part of something that is so um iconic so thank you all for joining in we'll do another one i don't know um we might do more of these and um i will see you all later thank you so much oh chrissy cartwright and beth robinson they were the amazing our amazing um dance captains and kept us all together and i could go on on forever and i've tried to end this and i'm now i've i've done what i said i wasn't gonna do i need to end this and be done um i love you all we'll see you again bye bye if i can find the cursor to go to the thing <laughs> of course